I want to talk about kind of the new era of blitzing that we're entering right now in Madden 25. So if you guys are familiar with what happened before this most previous patch, about a week and a half, two weeks ago now, there was a lot of A-gap blitzes that would happen here. And it would be something in between either a free safety zone blitz where, you know, this middle linebacker would just come screaming through the A-gap, especially on the right hash mark, uh, where that just doesn't seem to happen anymore. Or it would be something like double mug, right? where you'd have everybody overloading the interior of the offensive line. So let's go to something like this right here. And, you know, you'd crash down or something, and everyone just, when the ball is snapped, they'd all just push the line of scrimmage. Right there, that blitz should come in. They, we blitzed more than we had. But usually, it's like a disengage up the middle. You probably saw this quite a bit if you played the game. Now, for the most part, it seems like they really shored up the interior line logic, at least for guys who are head up with offensive linemen, so like right in front of them. And uh, anyone coming down on like a straight angle or like a crash in angle. What this has opened up though, and there's always different styles of blitzing. This has opened up a lot of loops. Looping is right now the name of the game. And let me kind of show you an example of what I mean by a loop blitz, where we're going to go to something like, let's go edge blitz three. Where's edge blitz? Where's edge blitz? There we go. We'll go edge blitz. I'm going to go baseline. And let me just call play like this. We're going to have Fred Warner right here. I'm sorry. We're going to have Campbell right here looping and you kind of see some of these loops based off the blitz angles where notice my defensive end on the left is crashing all the way in campbell is going outside of them if we snap this ball you'll see them loop and you'll actually see them come totally free that is what is considered a loop that's an outside loop though okay we've seen stuff like this in the past and there probably are ways to mess around with this you know maybe move this guy out maybe get it better or maybe make it worse i don't know if there's is one big thing I want to point out when it comes to labbing blitzes is that practice mode is good for demonstrative purposes, but it's not good to actually find blitzes. They don't always work, and the blocking isn't always the same from a real game to a uh, to practice mode. So just something to keep in mind, I'm just using practice mode right now as purely a demonstrative purpose. These blitzes can react differently in games, okay? So that's one way of getting this kind of loop going, right? We have an outward loop. Now let's go to something like cover four palms. Okay, let's streak the slot. All right, right here, you see there's no loop, right? This guy, Fred Warner, not looping. If we do this, though, in this blitz, look what he's doing now. Now he's looping. Now, is this a good loop? Let's see. How does this do? Pretty good. Again, you see looping seems to be kind of the name of the game. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to block loop blitzes. One of them, a half slide left to do a good job. ID the mic, run play action. That's okay. But also, let's take this to another extreme. Let's showcase another style of looping. We've seen interior looping from a linebacker. We've seen outward looping from a linebacker. Let's look at something like this. Where we go even 6-1. And let's see if we can get some looping happening from a defensive end or defensive tackle. Right? Let's see. Watch this big boy right next to me. Can he loop? He loops in. Now he gets a little caught up at the end. But once again, what do we have here? We have a loop happening. Now, what's interesting here is that while there's a ton of different loops, and I've shown you a few of them, there's more than this. Right right there, he gets caught up. These aren't super consistent always, which is kind of the issue of why a lot of people say there's no real good pressure. Additionally, all loops take a little bit of time for the most part. This one's probably the fastest. It's a little bit inconsistent, though, as you can kind of see. And even this one takes some time. So what you need here is you need some kind of coverage behind it. Now, in this game... Coverage is really, really bad. Zone coverage sucks. Like, it is hilariously bad. Like, funny, ha ha, he he, ha ha. What is going on with the zone coverage? It's so bad. But you can loop in this game, and if you just got to get some help behind that loop with, uh, with um, your coverage, right? So that's why you're seeing a lot of people bring these safeties down, because they're going to play this seam a little bit, right? Think about it. If this safety's up here, let's just leave that safety up here, and I'm going to throw Khalif Raymond immediately. Bang, bang. We can throw in front of the safety, right? Pretty straightforward. What do you do against that? A little bit tough to defend. You have to have a zone there. Now, let's do this, and let's bring this safety in here, right? So now he's down in the box, essentially. Not technically the box, but down near the line of scrimmage. Now we go throw that, make that same throw. Much tougher. We still catch it, but you can obviously see incredibly tougher. So that's why a lot of people are taking advantage of it. Because think about it. If you're blitzing, if you're looping, you're blitzing. You're probably sending at least four. If you're sending at least four, you only have seven people in coverage. You probably have three deep blues. So now we only have four people in coverage underneath. 
two of those underneath defenders, guess what they're in? They're in flat. So you only have two people maximum in the middle of the field. Really tough to defend seams and stuff like that. So we're almost trying to get our deep middle blues, ideally our inside quarters, to be multi-dimensional here and play super close to the line of scrimmage to be able to help defend the immediate middle for seam streaks. Things like this right here, right? Boom. And again, that's an example of why zone coverage is bad because even that right there, we're still able to fit this ball in. Not super consistent. I do want to point out though, if you were to do the same thing with like a deep middle third, this guy can get kind of exposed. If these deep middle thirds get too close to the line of scrimmage, they can get ran by really easily. You actually see that right here with a streak. Now you might be saying, okay, Civil, but does that happen with an inside quarter? You didn't even try that with an inside quarter. Great observation. If you did say that, you should. You should question everything. Let's go here. Right? Same idea. Just this is an inside quarter now. Same route combo. Boom. Inside quarter. He's going to actually turn his hips a lot better. Right? Now, maybe if we have a crazy speed advantage, Khalif Raymond could outrun that guy, but we just don't have a crazy speed advantage. Obviously, that's just like kind of football common sense type stuff right so we bring this guy down again right and then you can set up the splits however you wanted to and now we're able to play some defense what's the issue with this why isn't this super super good wow um well the issue with this and where people run into problems is that the inside quarter think about what the inside quarter's responsibility is it's a quarter of the deep part of the field meaning that you have to have help around this guy right you have to have a guy outside him so that's two people then you need at least one person on the other side. But if you want to defend this seam, you'd have to have this guy down, which means you also need somebody on the outside of him, right? So to run this style of coverage, you almost need to either make a bunch of adjustments or to have four deep blues. But if you're blitzing four and you have four deep blues and you have two flat, you only have one person in the middle of the field, right? That's where defense gets thrown in for a loop. Whereas if you could afford for either middle thirds to be able to get brought down here, or you could afford for this guy in a basic inside quarter or a deep zone to be able to make this play at least a little bit, right? And right there, he actually does, but consistently, he does not. We've already, we've already established that. We would have a massive change in what's viable on the defensive side of the ball. But instead, you see people have to stack the line of scrimmage and stack that box as the safety's coming down. What something uh, that a lot of people do to get this is that certain plays and formations, rather, have a play called double safety go, okay? So if we come out in this base aligned, doesn't matter, auto flip on or off. And then we audible to another play. Look what happens. Safety's automatically come down. We audible to something like cover four palms here, shade underneath. We get those inside quarters right all the way in the box. The other way people will do this is let's say they come out in a normal play. They don't do that. They'll just bring the safeties down. Just takes a little bit more, right? You're already moving players. So you have that to keep in mind too. That's gonna help you protect against those seam streaks quite a bit. Now, I'm not a massive fan of that style of defense i think it leaves you super susceptible in the open in the middle of the field but what i will say is that these inside quarters can also serve a as a little bit multi-dimensional and what do i mean by that well what's the role of this inside quarter in this situation what's his role what's he do we're in cover four drop basically he defends the deep inside quarter right well we have this awesome mechanic called switch stick so if he does not get pushed deep we can actually switch stick onto this guy and i actually get the wrong person trying to do two controllers but we can actually switch stick on to this defender who's not getting pushed deep. Let's go here, right? I'm here, here. Oh, we're here. And you can actually cheat underneath with him because no one's pushing him deep. That's a massive thing that's happening right now in the defensive meta. Because look at this. This guy's responsibility is deep, right? This is switch stick, all right stick. Uh, look up a switch stick tutorial if you do not know what switch stick is. Um, we're able to take this guy and actually say, nobody's pushing us deep right here. So we're going to switch, switch stick and go pick this off. Now, what would you do though? If I did this to you, what would you do on your next drive? Would you call this exact same play? You shouldn't, right? What you should do, whoops. We actually should do here, I'm just gonna spy the line for a second, is now put your inside wide receiver on a streak. Why? Answer the question. Why do you want this guy on a streak now? Why do you think? Well, if I try to be aggressive right here and we switch stick down, touchdown, right? So you're making me respect my deep zone integrity. Right? You're forcing me to back up. You're forcing me deep. Now, that is a massive thing right now that's happening. It's a little cat and mouse game there. And I could even play this game where, you know, this is where things get kind of advanced. But you see me switch stick up here, right? Boom. I hesitate and I fake going down. You throw that thing I'm thinking I'm going down and you throw the streak. I stay up on the streak. A little bit of a cat and mouse. Really, really tough. And that's actually what fancies are really good at. If you watch our fancy breakdowns, 
you'll see him do that some, and it really becomes a very, very like cat and mouse esque game with that. So now I want to showcase another way that you can loop, and I actually think something like this could be really good. And it's finding these crossfire plays, and essentially linebacker cross three show two. We're in the Seattle Seahawks defensive playbook. Nickel three three odd is the defensive formation. This used to be called crossfire, so you'll hear it called called that a lot. If you look right here, you'll see both of these guys looping. Now, if we just snap this ball, you'll see a little. Oh, whoops! I have auto motion. That's fine now. Uh, we we'll get a little bit of a double loop. They kind of bump into each other. Bang! But we could actually do something like this right here where let's do this let's see whoops let's see if we can get this loop to come in like this where the auto motion i have to hover on the side and now we're getting a little bit of a loop you think that's a crazy screamer and get blocked pretty easily that's why this stuff can sometimes be misleading but you can see kind of where some of the blitz setups are kind of going here uh of what i think can be really good because we're seeing a lot of stuff it's just about how can we make this more consistent how can we get this stuff actually buzzing loop blitz is really really good one style of blitzing that is not great in this game right now, and this is like old school, a little popular, is the slot corner blitzes. So they're actually decent in college football, but blitzing a slot corner is not great. This is a old school, like very, you know, send, send the slot edge heat. Gets picked up pretty easy in this game for the most part. Um, just not, nothing incredible coming from the slot corner pressure. But I did just want to show you guys that as that's another way. Another thing people do is contain blitz. So like bring the slot corner in in a contain. And he bumped out a little bit. He's still in that contain, though. Cool. We'll actually try this. I'm curious. What this ends up looking like. So now we're going loop plus contain blitz. Maybe good. Now contain just doesn't do a good job. Although, what happened with that D-tackle right there? Did he disengage or did he shed? Let's just try it again. And so now we're kind of combining some things, right? Little uh, contain blitz, which it really isn't good this year, but it could be good potentially paired with this. And nah. But an idea. I do think some kind of blitz like this is going to come out, which is incredibly, incredibly good. You also, of course, do have just basic overload blitzes too, which uh, an overload blitz would be something like come out and double mug, and people will be like, oh, they patched double mug, and then it'll come in and they'll be like, oh, I thought they patched it. This is a simple overload. Even if I block my halfback here, if we think about this, we have seven people in the line of scrimmage. They're blocking six. If I stand here for a second... There's a good chance they come free, and they didn't right there, but just from pure numbers, they can. You've probably seen blitzes like this work at a high level. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can get it come in right now. I don't care too much. I think you guys get the idea. All right, we'll go here. Bang. Actually, I mean, the CPU is doing an incredible job picking this up, but these overload blitzes are still very, very formidable. I don't know why we're not able to get it right now. Okay, I actually, I run this some. Um, do something like this. Maybe I have to swoop down some. I mean, they're, they're killing me with this. You don't want to, like, whatever. Um, but this overload bl style blitzing does a good job where you're just blitzing too many people. Um, you're blitzing essentially the same amount of people they're blocking, plus you're hovering with your user. So they have to take your user into account. Gets you a slight numbers advantage. Comes in. If you guys like this a little bit more advanced, a little bit more like going into the concepts of what's working really well in this game, uh, let me know. Uh, I can go more in depth in stuff like this more often. I like it. I just find that uh, in my experience in the past, a lot of people just want, give me the money play, give me the money play. And it's like, I can do that. But there's also other stuff that like, goes into it that I think is really fascinating. This is like under the hood stuff. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. And with that being said, boys, I'll see you all in the next one. You got if you want to get better at Madden 25, code Civil P gets you 30% off my website, civil.gg. You can join over a thousand active members over there. See you there.